Okay, now let's talk about carbohydrate intolerance and insulin resistance. I mean, we hear these terms a lot, but what do they actually mean? Well, in order to understand, let's start with insulin. Insulin is a hormone, our fat storage hormone. You can't store fat without insulin. Now, one of the other really important things about insulin is insulin is what helps us dispose of blood sugar from our circulation into the cells where it can be used. So when we eat, insulin rises different amounts depending on what we eat to help us dispose of blood sugar. So it's important to understand what the insulin response is to the different macronutrients. And what we see is the same thing that happens with blood sugar, which makes sense because if our blood sugar is rising, our insulin is gonna need to go up as well to dispose of that blood sugar, pushing it into the cells. So what we see is that with carbohydrate consumption, insulin goes up a lot, peaks quickly and drops fast. With protein, it gets a lot better. Look at what happens when we consume fat. Nothing. There's not an insulin response. That's gonna be important as we make our food choices. What actually happens with insulin and blood sugar when we eat? The first thing that I think we need to start with is understanding how much sugar is actually in our blood or our circulation at any given time. The average adult, believe it or not, has five liters of blood running through their circulation at all times. If you think of a two liter of soda, I mean, this is a lot of blood. And in that blood, there's sugar. But actually, the amount of sugar is a lot less than most people think. So an average blood sugar, most people realize a good one would be less than 100. But less than 100 what? What does that mean in a context that we can wrap our head around? If you do the math on this, what that means is five grams of sugar dissolved in five liters of blood. Not much, especially when you realize five grams actually is just a teaspoon. What's supposed to happen after we eat is blood sugar starts to rise, insulin rises, and helps us dispose of sugar into cells where it can be used. But remember, I said, that's what's supposed to happen in a system that's functioning normally. But now let's get in to insulin resistance and the food choices that we make. Now, most of you realize that a soda is not a good food choice, right? We can all accept that. A can of sugared soda is not gonna be healthy for us. We know it's gonna cause our blood sugars to rise. Why? It's full of sugar. Other carbohydrate food choices that we sometimes think are healthy for us are full of just as much sugar. Believe it or not, if we compare a can of soda to a cup of brown rice, the brown rice has more sugar than the can of soda, more. It's amazing. Let's take a look at what happens if we eat a cup of brown rice. You might've thought that was a good choice for two reasons. Number one, it's low fat. Number two, it's actually pretty low calorie. A cup of rice only has about 200 calories. Foods that we think are healthy for us we've been told are healthy for us, if we have insulin resistance, they're still not a good food choice. So for someone who consumes a cup of brown rice but is insulin resistant, here's what we find. Believe it or not, a cup of brown rice contains 45 grams of carbohydrates. That's nine teaspoons of sugar. You remember, in our system, there's one teaspoon. What is our system to do with nine teaspoons rushing in from a supposedly healthy food? 
body does is insulin levels rise. And as insulin levels rise, it helps push the sugar into the cells so that our body can keep the one teaspoon at a teaspoon. That's what's supposed to happen. But in someone who is insulin resistant, insulin isn't doing its job. So as those 45 grams come rushing into our circulation, we're unable to dispose of them as we should. And so our body's response to that is just make more and more insulin. Our insulin levels, they rise and they rise. We're carbohydrate intolerant. So we have to be very cautious here and not presume that some of these healthy carbs are actually just that. Because when the carbohydrates are high and we are insulin resistant, they're gonna cause a problem either way. They get high enough, we can dispose of the sugar for a while. But years, maybe even decades later, our system can't keep up any longer and our blood sugars start to rise. That's now diabetes. Let's talk about carbohydrate tolerance versus carbohydrate intolerance. So some people have a high carbohydrate tolerance. What does that mean? When they consume foods, specifically carbohydrates, their insulin levels will rise. They need to, to dispose of the sugar coming in into the cells. But they don't need that much insulin because their carbohydrate tolerance is high. Now, for people who have a low carbohydrate tolerance, who are carbohydrate intolerant, if they consume the exact same food, let's say a cup of brown rice, what's gonna happen with their insulin levels? They're gonna go up dramatically because their body is resistant to the insulin and therefore they need a lot more of it, a lot more insulin a lot more of our fat storage hormone to dispose of the same amount of carbohydrates. So what we see here, two very different things. High carbohydrate tolerance, low carbohydrate tolerance. And with low carbohydrate tolerance, this is driven by insulin resistance causing our body to need to make much more insulin, much more fat storage hormone. And what does that do? It puts us into a vicious cycle. So for someone who has a low carbohydrate tolerance, if they eat carbohydrates over their tolerance, what happens is they need more insulin. So our body releases more insulin. And this actually leads to the insulin resistance getting worse. And around and around we go. And people get stuck in this. They get stuck in this vicious cycle when they have a low carbohydrate tolerance driven by insulin resistance.